I've been playing Red Dead Online since the beginning and even though I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable on the game, there's a few things that I learned a lot later than what I should have. If I knew these small little gameplay mechanics, details, gameplay features, I would be a lot further ahead. I would be in a much better position with how much money and gold I have or my life would be considerably easier. In this video, I'm going through 5 things I wish I knew sooner in Red Dead Online. Before I do get into the video, if you enjoy the content here and want to see a bit more from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Every single week we are uploading the latest news and the latest tutorials around Red Dead Online. So if you want to get the most out of this game, then I highly recommend following the channel. And getting back into the video, I'm going through 5 things I wish I knew sooner. These are things which aren't advertised that much by Rockstar themselves. The only way that you can learn these tips is by following other players and watching them go through things in a different way to you. I haven't just learned these tips as of recently, some of them I've known for quite some time, but when they were released, I could have learned them so much sooner. It's actually taken me weeks, months, or even years for me to finally learn it. And if I learned it right at the beginning, I would be in a much better position. So the first tip is that you can get a free weapon. This is Lowry's revolver. This was added with the Moonshine update back in 2019. And for this, it's not solely done on just Red Dead Online. You also need a GTA Online, but you can still claim the benefits on both games. You'll first need to load up GTA Online, which is connected to the exact same social club that Red Dead Online is. You'll then go through the Los Santos Slasher Mystery. This is where you'll have to find a number of different locations where you find clues to to there being a serial killer. You'll find different body parts dotted all around the map and as we haven't done a video about this here on this channel, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the one that I followed. Once you find all body locations, eventually the serial killer will actually attack you. This is a random event so all you need to do is wait. Once that happens and you kill the serial killer, that is when you'll be given the navy revolver. But this is only within GTA. For you to actually get this within Red Dead Online, there's one last thing that you need to do and this is killing 50 NPCs. This doesn't need to be 50 in a row without you dying, you just need to kill 50 as a total. I even died several times when trying to go through this. But when you finally do kill 50, this is when you can close GTA down, go onto Red Dead Online and head all the way over to this location. This location will take you underground and you'll find a chest which you can loot and upon looting it, you'll get a few valuables in there but you'll also be able to pick up Lowry's revolver. Lowry's revolver is the exact same as the Navy revolver. The only two differences is that Lowry's revolver is a different variant and the second difference is that it's free. You don't have to pay for this. As long as you have GTA as one of your games, then you'll be able to go through this and you'll be able to get yourself a free weapon. The second thing that I wish I knew sooner was how to get the Poison Poppy Moonshine recipe. This can prove to be very valuable to you very early on in the game when going through the Moonshine roll. Right to the beginning, you have nothing. The only way that you can unlock better moonshine recipes is by progressing through the main missions and increasing your rank. Both of which can take some time, but there is a way in which you can unlock a different recipe which gives you the exact same amount of money. You can get this a lot earlier within the role. The poison poppy recipe is based on a random event, but a lot of players struggle to actually trigger this event because it's not one of those things where it'll just randomly spawn in. There's three different things that you need to do. The first thing that you need to do is interact with the moonshine role. This is by selling your moonshine, doing a bootlegger mission, doing a main mission, or interacting with a moonshine dynamic event. Once that's done, the second thing that you need to do is wait 30 minutes. And in this time, you can't do anything to do with that moonshine roll. If you go and do another bootlegger mission, a main mission, a dynamic event, or sell your moonshine, then the timer starts all over again and you'll have to wait 30 minutes from that point. But once those 30 minutes are up, that's when there's a chance for this dynamic event to spawn in. And it'll spawn in in a couple different locations which you are now seeing on screen. My recommendation, because we don't know which one it's going to spawn at, is that you go through each and every single one of them individually, and by the time you get to the end, you just go straight back through it again. It won't spawn in the first one, it can take a bit of time, but eventually you'll get there and you'll be able to claim the Poison Poppy Moonshine recipe. And this could be big for you very early on as it will be giving you a lot more money compared to the other recipes that you've unlocked. The only way that it's not worth you going to get this type of recipe is if you've already got to max rank 20 within this role 
and you've already got all the other recipes that are available because it will give you the exact same amount of money. This is just one of those things that can benefit you early on within the moonshine role. The third thing that I wish I knew sooner was the drunk player interaction challenge which you have within your daily challenges. The drunken player interaction challenge can be found under the moonshine daily challenges and by completing it will reward you with gold. How much gold it will reward you all depends on your current daily challenge streak. But this is a daily challenge which always seems to pop up. It seems like it's a challenge multiple days every single week. And I always used to go into the Discord, ask for someone to join my lobby or invite everyone that's currently within my lobby to my moonshine check so that I can drink alcohol for my character and then just interact with another player by hitting them. And you would have to do this two times with there also being a cooldown. But ever since the Moonshine Brawl was first released, there has been a bug within the game that you can use to easily complete this challenge without having to get other players involved and without actually needing to get drunk. All you need to do is head over to your Moonshine Shack and go towards the front door. There it will tell you to hold Y or Triangle depending on what platform you're using to enter the shack. You'll hold that button down to enter and as soon as you're finished you are going to spam circle or b yet again depending what controller you're using your character will then clench their fist as it goes through the animation of you opening the door and entering your moonshine shack it will then fade to black and as you get back into the gameplay where you can control your character this time within your moonshine shack that's one of them done that counts as a drunk player interaction you just need to back out the door and then enter again to do the exact same thing and there you go, that's a drunk player interaction done two times which will award you with the challenge. This is also the easiest challenge in which you can finish within the game. At the time of recording this video, this still works and we're coming up to two years of this being within Red Dead. So it's likely Rockstar aren't going to fix this anytime soon. The fourth thing that I wish I knew sooner is that you can very easily get the Moonshine Brawl way before the trader. This is something that I thought a lot of players knew way before, but it turns out they don't. You can actually get into the Moonshine Brawl without ever actually needing to enter the trader role. And for some people, that might sound impossible because the way that you unlock the Moonshiner is by going through the trader role and you have to do one of two things. You either need to do one trader delivery or you need to get to rank five as a trader. And after you complete either of those two things, you will then get a letter inviting you to meet up with Maggie. But if you want to just skip over the trader without having to buy into it and go to the Moonshiner, which by the way is way better for your time and the resources that you have, especially if you've just started playing Red Dead, then the best thing for you to do is to link up with another player. Link up to a player that does already have the trader role. You can very easily do this just by joining our Discord. A link to that can be found in the description down below. In our Discord, we have a trade delivery section where players can request to join other people or they can invite people to tag along with them. Even though it's their trade delivery, you're part of their posse, you're tagging along and that still counts as you doing one trade delivery and after you finish that, you'll then be invited to meet up with Maggie. You still need to pay the 25 gold bars to enter, but it makes life a lot easier because now you don't have to pay 15 gold bars to enter the trader and then on top of that, another 25 gold bars to enter the moonshiner. And the moonshiner is so much easier for you to run. You just set up moonshine and then you can go away for an hour. But a trader requires you to attend to it by constantly bringing in trader materials and different animal goods so that the trader materials bar is always full. It just makes life a lot easier and ever since knowing this, I've never started an account within this game where I haven't gone to the moonshiner first rather than going to the trader. The fifth thing which I wish I learned sooner was to be able to change the settings and this is probably the easiest one but it's the one that I learned most recently. I actually started doing this over the summer right at the beginning. There's a lot of different settings that you can change within your controls. And even though the default settings are okay, there's ways in which you can make it a lot better by changing certain buttons to be tapped to either a hold or a toggle. So to do this, you want to go into your pause menu. You will then go all the way down to settings and then select controls. The settings that I recommend changing for everyone is your third person and third person controls. You change them from standard to standard FPS. Changing this setting here will change how you use your controller to sprint. 
the default is that you'll spam X and A. But now with the standard FPS, X and A will actually be how you crouch within the game. And instead, you're going to be pressing down your left stick to run forward. To make it so that you're not spamming the left analog in for you to be able to sprint, you're going to change your running mode on foot from hold to toggle. That way you could just press it in, your character's in full sprint, and then it's just about using that left analog stick to aim in a direction that you want to go into. You then want to change tap assist from off to hold. This will make certain actions from you spamming a button for you to just hold the button. And then finally, you want to change the fishing setting from hold to reel, from off to on. The default is that you'll use your right analog stick to just go round and round in circles whilst you're trying to reel the fish in. Now, you'll just hold X or square depending on controller and you can just reel that fish in a lot easier. The rest of the settings that you can change under controls is entirely up to you. It mainly comes down to preference, but these settings right here can make life a whole lot easier. But anyway guys, these are 5 things I wish I knew sooner within Red Dead Online. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about in this video, then please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you're someone that has an extra tip which you think a lot of people within the community don't know about but can make life a whole lot easier, then also feel free to leave that in the comment section. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to so see ya.